When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he's been raised from the dead and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. It's over. The agony is over. Jesus is dead. There's no mistake. His head droops forward. He hangs there limp, motionless. The bleeding from his wounds has stopped. There's a sense of disbelief, of coldness, emptiness. The disciples fled long ago. Now the crowd is dispersing. Their jeers have ceased. They go slowly. All that's left now are the women who've been there throughout, watching and weeping. And of course the soldiers. It's left to Joseph a member of the Jewish Sanhedrin, yet a secret disciple of Jesus, to carry out the final rites. Maybe it's out of respect for Jesus. Or maybe it's regret that he did not follow Jesus more openly. Or perhaps it's adherence to Jewish law, which demands that hanged criminals should be cut down before sentence. Um, whatever his reason Joseph and possibly Nicodemus he who visited Jesus by night and also a council member courageously approached Pilate and asked for the body the centurion checks that Jesus is dead so Pilate grants the request Joseph probably has about three hours before sunset. So he buys linen cloth and wraps the body. John adds detail about spices. Joseph then places the body in his own new tomb and seals the entrance with a large stone. All is now complete. But the scribes and Pharisees frightened that the disciples of Jesus will steal the body and proclaim it resurrection, go to Pilate and request that a guard be placed at the tomb. See to it yourselves is the reply. And they do. Sunset. Darkness. The night obscures everything. 
The silence of death seems almost to shout its defiance. What more can we do? Where do we go now? He's dead. In the tomb. Alone. Unapproachable. But don't you see? The scene is now set for God's final act in this great drama of life and death. God will act again in his own time, in his own way. Patience. For now, let us simply kneel by the tomb. Let the events of Friday sink in. Let us reflect on the incredible depths of God's love, of Jesus' sacrifice that has resulted in such agony, such suffering, all so that my sin and yours might be forgiven and the way back to God be opened for eternity. Oh, the great, great love of Jesus. Lord, how can we ever thank you for all that you have done for us, for your sacrifice, for your willingness, for your dedication. Lord, we praise you and we worship you. Lord, we pray that we may learn from this to follow you more closely, to listen to you more clearly, to work for you with greater dedication and love. And Lord, we praise you forever. Amen.